We're back on the Morning Brew with Space Ambassador Loretta Hall. Yes. What is it? What is a Space <laughs> Ambassador? You also an author. You were on just not too long ago. You were right. talking about your bucket list book, and this is your the complete Space Buffs bucket list. And this came out just what three months ago? Two January. Months ago? Uh -huh. Not that long ago. Yeah. And it's 100 space th space things to do in New Mexico before you uh, kick not, the bucket. Not all of them are in New Mexico. Ah, this is this nationwide. Excellent. Yeah. And you've been doing them. I, yeah, well, I'm up to 57 now, I think. Very cool. So yeah. is this like a to-do list for you, and you're just checking them all off? Well, some of them. Okay. Um, you know, I had to come up with a hundred, at least 100 things, and right. some of them are not going to be my cup of tea, but then right. I, there are others that didn't quite make the list that I figure I can substitute. So. Right. So what the list is flexible for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what is a... Uh, space ambassador. Well, and, uh, back, I know what regular ambassadors do. Yeah, well, it's similar. Um, back in 2011. So, do you have intergalactic diplomatic immunity? Oh, I never realized that. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> I had to ask. Yeah. You get a special license plate? Well, <laughs> you get like a knows? spaceship with a couple of flags on the front? <laughs> Yeah, you should see my bodyguards. <laughs> uh, now, back in 2011, the National Space Society instituted this program to um, encourage people to go out and talk to groups about space activities and mm -hmm. get people informed and enthused about space exploration. And all you had to do basically was sign up and say, I'm going to do this. And so I did. Uh, right at, as the program got started. And uh, one of the things I love to do is go out and talk to groups. So mm -hmm. um, a couple of months ago, they decided, okay, it's time to wrap this thing up. It was supposed to be a competition. And so they went through the records and chose the top 10 space ambassadors who had spoken to the most people and had the best reviews of their talks. And I ended up in the top 10. Mm -hmm. So I got a free admission to the International Space Development Conference, which happened to be in Puerto Rico this year. Yeah. And I Not went a bad down, place to go no, and check it out. Went down there, and we each presented a, a sample presentation, and I ended up in fourth place. That's very cool. It is very cool. Very cool. And uh, my award that I got for doing that is a chance to go to the National Aerospace Training and Research Center and ride the centrifuge, so which I what, did, so which I NASTAR did a couple is. of months ago. I yes. was looking at NASTAR, and it was like, yes. is that like NASCAR? But it's uh, a little more but advanced. But it's a little, little more than, yeah. And here's this is the video of you. Oh yes. And this is that's the centrifuge. And this is the uh -huh. kind of thing I've seen this in movies. It always looks so much fun. Yeah. Um, is it fun or is it just terrifying to be no, thrown around fun. at six Gs? Yeah. It's fun because you don't feel like you're going in a circle. You just oh. feel like you're flying whatever they're simulating. Mm -hmm. And in this experience that I did in April, um, they we had a the first day was just training and just just experiencing a few G forces, mm -hmm. and then the second day in the morning we flew uh, simulated Virgin Galactic space suborbital space flight, uh, first at fifty percent and then at a hundred percent. And then in the afternoon, we flew a different simulation that would be more like what the Lynx uh, spacecraft would, or suborbital flight would be. Very cool. So, it, and it felt like you were flying. It didn't yeah. feel like you were going around in circles. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, are, do you have your ticket for the Virgin Galactic? Uh, no, I'm yet. saving up for that. Saving up, <laughs> saving up the two hundred eighty thousand dollars for well, that. Well, I, I hope I can get it bought before the price goes up again. <laughs> right, no doubt. Or before they fly, they haven't got a chance to yet. You're right. But um, so, how did you get started on this whole space path? Well, I, I experienced as a teenager the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo era. So mm -hmm. it was, you know, that was really right. cool. Right. And then um, several years ago, when I first heard that the world's first purpose-built commercial spaceport was going to be built in New Mexico. I right. thought, you're, well, you're wearing your Spaceport America I shirt. I am indeed, and I'm a big proponent of the spaceport. Uh, you know, there, we, there are there doubters that think it may not go, but it is going. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I got interested in why they picked New Mexico for that location mm -hmm. and started doing some research and found out we got a pretty cool state for the since 1930 right, doing been, space research right New Mexico's been right on the cutting edge yeah. and the spaceport being you know White Sands Missile Range is such mm -hmm. an asset for so I, much absolutely. of this research and people forget that that's down there yeah. and basically if you launch anything from Spaceport America you've got miles and miles of nothing 
Exactly. Absolutely nothing. You know, I saw a report, a news report yesterday that SpaceX is doing some of their rocket testing near, I think it's McCallum, Texas. Mm -hmm. And they are, again, in negotiations now with the city council. They're trying to um, come up with a, a new contract, I guess, basically. But they're having a lot of complaints from the citizens that live mm -hmm. nearby because right. the rocket tests are so loud. I can believe And it. they have this whole list of when you can get up to certain decibel levels and how long you can uh, have that and you can't do anything at night. It, yeah, go to Spaceport America. Right. Let's go Nobody down there. cares down there. That's the, and that's the point. <laughs> Nobody lives out there. Exactly. And so it's a perfect spot for all of that. Yeah. So what are your next steps and where do you take all of this from here? Well, I'm going to go back to NASTAR and ride the, the centrifuge mm -hmm. again. Um, it'll be a different experience this time because the, the one I did in April, it was with a, <clears throat> a medical research project mm -hmm. that uh, was evaluating different uh, types of training that they might use. And this time it's going to be the same type of experience that people who have tickets on Virgin Galactic are encouraged to go through this as a preliminary uh -huh. training. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, we'll be back in a couple of seconds on the morning brew, and we're going to flip through this because where is this on here? This is. Number Before three. I forget, I think we had we had it bookmarked. We thought yes. we had it figured out here. Number three, this is kind of part of one of the hundred things that any space buff needs to at least check out in the book, The Bucket List. This is the complete space buffs bucket list, 100 space things to do before you die. Yes. Well, but one is af after, but... <laughs> one is after. <laughs> Can you get your ashes like washed yeah. up in space? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, that happened to the guy that played Scotty in yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes on the morning brew. Thank <laughs> you.